Hello people of YouTube, I'm John, and on today's product spotlight, we're going to look at an HO scale locomotive from Atlas. So let's get over to the workbench and do our thing. Alright, so here's what we're looking at today. It's an HO scale Atlas Master EMD GP40-2 phase two locomotive and before i delve into it too deeply i wanted to point out that it comes with all this stuff here we have a couple warranty cards this is an esu quick start guide because this is the sound equipped version we'll talk about that in a minute and then exploded view drawings over here and then it has three parts bags that it came with the pieces that i recognized right off the top were the wind deflectors and sunshades I'm not going to install those for the spotlight, but just know that it comes with those. One other thing worth pointing out is that it was packaged in this cradle thing, which means it has screws holding it in. So I'm going to need to get a screwdriver to take this thing off. Okay, I took it out using my handy dandy screwdriver. And to be honest, I'm not really excited about having to use a screwdriver to take a model out of a box, but I will say that that arrangement really holds the model in place and keeps it secure inside the box. I don't know that I've ever received an Atlas model like this that was screwed into a cradle that was damaged. As a matter of fact, I, I can say that I don't think I ever have received one that was damaged. So while it's a pain to take out, the trade-off is the model comes undamaged. So I was looking at the website and these come in 10 different paint schemes, including an undecorated one. And this is Atlas. So they have what they call the silver series and the gold series. The silver series is a DCC ready model that comes with an NMRA standard plug for you to plug your decoder in. It's a, basically a plug and play. And then the gold series, which is what this is, comes with an ESU 5.0 uh, Loke Sound decoder. The Silver Series, which is DCC ready, as I mentioned, goes for $189.95. And the Gold Series, that comes with DCC and sound, goes for $299.95. All the separation lines are as crisp as they could possibly be. Something else I'm noticing, and I don't know if this is something that Atlas has been doing more lately. It seems like they have. And that is the fact that the trucks seem to have more detail in them. And I mean like this extra brake line stuff here. And back in there you can see brake shoes along the wheels. It's just a really detailed truck on, you know, well both really. And then as you're looking here you can see that they've also picked out some details with red paint here around the fuel tank. You can see there's a lot of great detail on and around the cab and the, the short hood here or the nose if you want to call it that there's a little dude in there little engineer right and the union pacific shield looks pretty good these are separately applied very thin wire grabs in here okay all this separately applied thin wire uh, something else that looks particularly good are the stripes along the step wells or the steps you know the stairs that lead up that's pretty cool I like how they've highlighted the white on the handrails there and then something else that I've been noticing more on recent Atlas releases are uncoupling levers it's pretty cool that they've added those and then the snowplow also has the grabs on it which are highlighted in white the detail on the front of this model is very good and I guess since we're looking at it, I'll point out the separately applied horn casting. So the three chime horn looks good. I'm seeing a little, I don't know what this is. There's like a little, can you see this on the camera? So like a little streak of something. I can't tell what that is. It's like the paint got rubbed off or something. But since I'm pointing at this, I might as well point out that the holes for the wind deflectors and the sunshades are already drilled, which will make it a lot easier to put them on. So I tried to rub this off, but it didn't budge. So I think it's either a little 
you know, paint smudge, or it may be where somebody handled it before the gray paint was dry. It's kind of hard to tell. But in any case, it's no big deal. If this ever gets a weathering job, that's going to go away anyhow. So I'm not worried about it. All right, so I wanted to show you this angle real quick. Just to point out, there's also an airline here. And then you have your MU cables that come through the plow out to the front, which is how these things were threaded. And if you look real carefully, you can see that there's a recessed brake ratchet in the nose, which is correct for the GP40-2. Very cool. Separately applied windshield wipers. That one's kind of thick, but the ones on the other windshields are very thin. So looking at the fireman side, you can see it's pretty much the same kind of detail. And, you know, the trucks have that extra brake detail. There's a bell down here. There are jacking pads, right, that are part of the mold, apparently. That's something else that modelers used to have to add on a lot of these models. It seems like they're putting a lot more underbody detail these days. And I don't have an old release of one of these to compare it with. But something tells me that that's stuff that they're adding, trying to keep up with the state of the art here. And again, on this side, you can see there's red picked out in the fuel tank area. There's an air tank down here, air reservoir. And then there's a box here, which is an air filter right behind the fireman's seat. Or, well, I mean, I guess it's the conductor nowadays. But the point is, that's an air filter box. I said on some other spotlights I did that that was a toolbox. And on some Southern Pacific locomotives, they did put a toolbox back here. But on the GP40-2s, that's an air filter of some sort. So, But it's uh, very good. Also, from this angle, you can see up top, there's a separately applied air conditioning unit. And there's conduit that comes into the cab from back here where the antenna is. So, yeah, there seems like there's more detail on these. Uh, we're going to look at this roof a little bit closer here in a minute. Because I'm also seeing some fan detail that's worth pointing out. But let's look at the back first. So the back has similar detail to what we looked at on the front. I did not point out the movable drop step. This actually can be placed in the up or down position. Just want to be careful not to break it. Also, you have your uncoupling lever and the MU hoses. And there's an air hose just on the other side of the coupler there. And then look at those nicely done fine wire grabs, all separately applied. There's a curved grab on the top which we can take a closer look at when we look at the fans. And something you may have noticed, uh, I'm not sure how well this is coming out on the camera. It looks like you can see them. These are separately applied lift rings too. So we'll, we'll be able to see that a little better when we look at the top. This is the last three quarter view that we'll be looking at on this model. But I just wanted to show you to point out that the air hose is there. There's another very fine wire grab there looks good. I think the fans are one of the highlights of this model. I mean, it looks to me like if you could just get in there with a, with a brush or something and kind of paint, paint some black weathering powder down on those fans, that would really make it look even better. And then I mentioned about the curved grab here. Excellent. These almost, to me, look as good as Canon fans. Those are the aftermarket fans you can get to replace these. And I don't see any reason why you would need to, to be honest. The dynamic brake fan also has that same kind of depth. And you can probably tell from this angle that these are the lift rings, separately applied lift rings, as I was mentioning. Overall, it's just it's really good. All right, and we'll look at the other half of the top, right? More separately applied lift rings. You can tell it's a separately applied antenna with the conduit, separately applied AC. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty detailed and it looks really good. Something else I just noticed as I was examining the roof is the fact that this model also has diamond plate tread and these stairs behind the engineer's seat are see-through. That's pretty cool. They even have those little white stripes. You know, watch your step. And since we're looking at this angle, I might as well point out the separately applied windshield wiper, too. Looks good. It's always my favorite part to run the locomotive. So let's get this thing started up and see how it works. I have my 
laptop running JMRI just off camera here. Sounds just like I expected. Get the light on. And here we go. got to say this is another example of Atlas's very smooth running low speed. It's because it has that special motor. These all have five pole skewed armature motors and dual flywheels. And I'll tell you what, it really makes it crawl. Very impressive low speed capability. Alright, the lights are directional and they come on with your F0 key. These are golden white LEDs and they look pretty good in person. I don't see any light leaks around the number boards. Looks good. Let's take a look at the rear headlight. Same thing here. Number boards come on with the headlight. I think this is a really solid release from Atlas. The fact that it comes with all those prototype specific details and the fact that it comes with all those details at all is a huge bonus. And I think Atlas has been stepping up their game a bit. I've noticed on some of these newer releases that there seems to be more underbody detail and like in the trucks, there seems to be more detail. So good job. And I'm looking forward to more. I'll see you next time.